It's time to get out from under the doona. National Cabinet has laid out Australia's three-phase plan to lifting restrictions, but the reality of putting that into practice is only just setting in. Welcome to a day in the post-lockdown world. It's 6am in Brisbane and fitness buffs are back in the gym. gym is part of the daily routine for many Australians and if you're like me you can't wait to get back to it but when the doors finally reopen it's likely to look a little different. Boot camps in the fresh air are likely to be a continuing feature while inside Joanne Johnson's preparing for when her members can return. I think it'll be a new normal. It's imagined the gym will have a cap on the number of people based on its floor space. And once you're in, that floor space will be clearly divided to keep gym goers socially distant at all times. Members must book into class. We will then be able to allocate the equipment needed by that member. It's not an option to share weights and cleanliness is key. You may have added responsibilities each time you come to work out. Things like having your own equipment allocated to you, it's also likely you'll be responsible for cleaning the gear as well. Each space will be um, allocated with a container, our, obviously our detergent and um, their cloth. Outdoor exercise may still be the preference, just 30% of people say they'll go back to a gym anytime soon. But swimming laps at the local pool is still in limbo. Many operators can't wear the costs of making things COVID safe, while the number of lanes are limited. It's 9am in Sydney and thousands of workers are arriving back at the office. Office blocks across the city have been empty for months now, but they're about to come to life. This 39-storey office in North Sydney is normally home to 3,500 workers. The problem starts even before you reach your office floor. Most lifts are only a few metres wide and long, so adhering to social distancing rules means only two people are allowed in a lift at a time. Let's do a rough calculation. With 3,500 people in the building, two per lift means more than 1,700 trips. Each return trip takes on average two minutes. With 12 lifts, it means it'll take five hours to get everyone upstairs. And once you're up here, what will the workplace look like in a post-pandemic era? It'll be very different. I think the fact that we've worked so well flexibly for so long now, people will insist upon that flexibility. Some people will want to work from home, some people will want to be in the office, some people might want to be somewhere in between. The traditional nine to five workday is unlikely to stay. We want a staggered start time as well. So we don't want everyone turning up on the 1st of June at nine o'clock. Um, we want people to come in dribs and drabs at different uh, points of the day. And I think that will be a permanent feature of the workplace of the future. There'll be specific entry and exit points in each room to ensure one way flow of people throughout the office. Some businesses have even refitted their whole office space, installing perspex barriers and removing computers where desks are too close. So the six feet office is a concept that can help businesses prepare for a safe return to work. So when you enter your work zone, you go to your desk and around your desk there is a round sticker. The sticker tells you what your safe zone is. It's a reminder for colleagues to keep that 1.5 meter distance. The communal kitchen area will also have to change. The recommendation is not to share the microwave, cutlery or crockery. When lunchtime hits, finding food outside the office will also be a different experience. It's lunchtime in Perth. All those office workers will be ready to eat. Food halls have been deserted since the lockdown measures started. But with office blocks and shopping centres reopening, the lights will come back on. At this Korean takeaway, getting the wok fired back up is an exciting step. But I'm really happy to see people again. Yeah. Precautions are being put in place. McDonald's in the US just released guidelines for its stores. 
Self-service drinks machines are out and those self-service kiosks will be turned off too. Bathrooms will be cleaned every 30 minutes. Tables wiped down between every customer. In hospitality, hygiene is the safest bet. So I'm hiding my mouth and nose so I can keep distance from customers anyway. And I also hand sanitizers ready whenever I touch the cash, I wash. Takeaway will be encouraged to avoid overcrowding. But when dining in is allowed again, things are going to look a little different. This is how many tables would normally be here at Market Hall. Moving ahead, that's going to have to reduce and they'll be left with just this. Grabbing a quick bite is going to take a bit of planning. Even after work drinks won't be the same. It's 5pm in Darwin and the beer is flowing again. Here in the Northern Territory, pubs reopened on Friday. And what's happening here could be a sign of things to come across the country. To be able to enjoy a cold one, there's a couple of rules that need to be followed. There's a two hour time limit at all venues. Like cafes, all tables need to be at least one and a half metres apart. If you want alcohol, you'll need to buy food and people must be seated for all food and drinks. You know, I think about our poor brothers and sisters down there in Sydney and Melbourne and, you know, trying to work out how just 10 people in a restaurant's going to work. And here we are going, how are we going to make only 10 on a table work, you know? While going to the pub isn't exactly what it used to be, after weeks of lockdowns, just spending time out with friends feels like a cause for celebration. Yeah, yeah, I'm really actually surprised because I thought it would be like a lot more stricter or just like a lot more not as relaxed. Um, beer out of a keg rather than a stubby. And it seems the proof is in the pint. It's estimated 1,000 kegs were used this opening weekend in the NT. That's 50,000 litres or 100,000 schooners. As if all the changes so far aren't enough, getting home presents just as many challenges. This was Brisbane peak hour on Friday evening. Nothing like the normal gridlock, but as restrictions start to ease, more people are getting back in their cars. And 70% of Australians have said they'd be nervous about taking public transport after the pandemic. Because we will see uh, fewer people catching public transport, we believe, at least in the short term, and therefore more people on our roads. But we're still seeing far fewer people working in the CBD in particular at this stage. Getting out of lockdown is just the first step. The way we live has changed. For good. <laughs>